Giving gifts can be a source both of great joy and some anxiety. And while I don't always have the time or energy to go all out, I've always enjoyed putting a lot of thought and effort into giving other people gifts. So in this video, I'll share some of my thoughts around what goes into giving someone in your life something really special. If you're new here, my name is Yarla, and on Early Owl, we learn how to spread some joy to the people who are important to us. So I've come up with six different areas that I think you can leverage when giving someone a gift. So first I'll just go through those areas and how you can think about applying them. Then I'll show some examples of gifts I've given in the past, which kind of shows how these different areas are applied, which can hopefully give you some ideas for gifts in the future. The first thing I want to emphasize is that I think how good of a gift you can give to someone is pretty directly correlated to how close of a relationship you have with them. So there's a reason why I put how to give an amazing gift in the title. If you're just looking for a quick gift tip to give to your second aunt or your neighbor who lives below you who you barely know or anything like that, then this video isn't really for that. But if you have someone who really means a lot to you and you want to pour some blood, sweat and tears into giving them something memorable, then keep watching. These six different areas you can leverage when giving a gift is money, usefulness, surprise, effort, specialness, and relationship. Ironically, I think giving money is a cheap way to give a good gift. And by cheap, I kind of just mean it's the easy way out. Like if you just give someone a private jet, then sure, it's a pretty good gift, but it doesn't require a lot of thought or effort or knowing the person, it's just throwing money at the problem. And generally, I don't think this is the best way to go about it. I'm not saying you shouldn't or can't spend a lot of money on a gift, but more just that it shouldn't be the reason why it is a good gift that it's expensive. Like maybe the good gift you have in mind is expensive. And if so, that's fine, but it shouldn't be the primary focus on the gift. The first thing someone thinks about when they think back on this gift you gave them shouldn't be, oh, it was so expensive. The one exception, and this is when you should lean more on money, is if there's a very big gap in income between you and the person receiving the gift. Especially if the person receiving the gift has like little to no income. There's basically two scenarios where this comes into play a lot. One is if they're struggling financially just generally and they have some lacks in the home, like, okay, their fridge is broken, they need a new fridge then it doesn't really matter how much effort or special sauce you put into the gift, like how much heart you put into the gift. If they need a fridge and they can't afford it, then there's no amount of sentimentality you can give that would make up for what they actually need in their life. The other exception here is when it comes to kids or younger people who don't generally don't have their own strong sense of income. If you're nine years old and you want a Nintendo 64, then no amount of thought or effort almost is going to make up for what they actually want and can't afford. But if we're talking on like a similar-ish economic situation, basically if you're giving them a gift they could have just bought themselves in terms of money, then leaning exclusively on money is not really a good idea. Usefulness is basically how often and how impactful the use of the gift is. This comes into play in a couple of ways. The main thing to think about here is if it's a really useful, like a really life-changing positive gift, then they would have probably bought, themselves, bought it for themselves already. So then you gotta think about the scenarios where this is not the case. One area where this is not the case is if you are like, for whatever reason, a domain expert. Like for me, I have like a higher technical adaption than say my parents. So there's been several times where I've been able to say upgrade their technical setup with a TV and I can do this quite easily because I'm in that world and I understand like how to set up a Chromecast with Netflix or whatever, but they would never take that step until it's like a few years down the line in terms of technical adoption. So I can pretty easily revolutionize how they watch TV, which is a big part of their life. And it's easy for me to do, but it's not something they would have taken the plunge on without me giving them that as a gift. A great gift has to have some element of surprise. The way to completely avoid surprise is just to ask the person what they want and then give them that. This is a completely fine way to go about things if you don't know what to get someone and you don't have the time or effort or any thoughts about what you want to give the person. But even if it maxes out in like money or usefulness or whatever, it is kind of limited how special of a gift this can be to someone because it is just 
than buying something with your money at the end of the day. So the basic way to apply surprise to giving a gift is just that you're giving something that they don't know what it is. And the more unexpected the gift is, the more surprising it is, which if it goes off well is a good thing, but obviously you can just give something that they didn't want at all. And that's still surprising, but not a good thing. But there are certain scenarios or certain types of gifts where you can kind of ramp up the surprise factor even more and it becomes a bigger part of the experience. But this can also increase some risk, like you can have a surprise party, a surprise trip, or a surprise visit. For the right person at the right time, this can be a great and memorable thing. But you do need to tread very carefully here and know the person you're giving this to and know that it fits into both their life and their personality style. It's always a good idea if you want to really surprise someone, say with like a surprise trip or a surprise visit, that you ally yourself with Someone else, I remember I did something like this for my mom for her 60th birthday, where I was living in a different country, but then I planned this out with my sister where I just kind of showed up and surprised her. My sister had planned a birthday dinner with my mom and then I just showed up surprised for that dinner. So it wasn't like, it was completely unplanned. and She had a open schedule and I just slammed into that. It was more like she had something planned with my sister that I was a surprise part of. Another thing you should always do if there is some surprise that has some ask of someone else's schedule is that there should always be like some way to back out of it that is completely okay. Like if you buy some surprise tickets for you and your girlfriend, then they should be fully refundable or at least you should be okay with just this not happening because it didn't fit into your schedule and you just have to eat that cost then. Effort is a big lever to pull when it comes to gifts. And I think it's something that can be applied to a lot of different scenarios. The bad side of this is that obviously, as the name implies, it takes a lot of effort to apply effort. Everyone's time is valuable. And that is a big reason why putting in more effort into a gift is makes it more special because it shows you that you care about the other person because it's not like you have infinite amount of time that you can just put in hours and hours into gifts for everyone. There are some hidden benefits or hidden leverages you can use with effort. Like you can use the motivation of giving someone a gift to either learn or improve in some way. Like let's say you are a creative and you're trying to improve in this creative area. It's not always the most motivating thing just to plug away at exercises and do things for practice work. But if you decide to give someone a gift from the area where you are specialized in, then that can give you a lot more motivation to go hard and learn a lot and improve a lot to create something for that person. So even though you're just pouring effort into a gift, you're also learning and improving at the same time. There's a bunch of different ways you can apply effort to a gift. One would be to put in some extra effort on the gift after it's been purchased. So let's say you buy someone a Kindle, the no effort option is just to buy the Kindle, wrap it and give it to them. But if you wanted to put in some extra effort, then you could load up the Kindle with like five of your favorite books or five books you recommend to that person. And that just shows you put in a bit more thought and a bit more effort into the gift. Another way would be to get something custom made, like a commission piece of art or basically anything that you can't just pick up from the shelf that required some thinking and planning and executing to get done. Another way is just to make something yourself and depending on your skill set or whatever else, the sky is the limit. A final way to give effort is just if you have some shared responsibilities, like you live with someone and you do the dishes or you cook dinner or whatever, and it's just something you both have to do every so often, then you can give them some of your effort, like have a gift card or a coupon system or whatever, where you just say, here, take this, and then I'll take responsibility for it at your leisure. Specialness is a bit hard to define exactly, but I think it's like closely related to sentimentality. It's basically that the gift you're giving or receiving has some special meaning or special value to either you or the person you're giving it to or both. Some examples here is something like a family heirloom. Like if you have some piece of jewelry and it's been in your family for a long time, then that is worth more than just the same piece of jewelry bought from a store. Another big way to leverage specialness is if you use past memories between you and the person or kind of past events from the relationship. It can be difficult to apply special just by pulling it out of thin air, but every so often you will have the opportunity to lean into it and it will make the gift a lot better. One thing I will point out is that specialness is kind of a transitive property. So if something is special and means a lot to you, 
and you give that to the other person and they know that it means a lot to you, then by default, it will also mean a lot to them because they know it was important to you. You decided to give it to them for whatever reason. So now that specialness is transferred onto them. Like random example here is my little sister got a ring that I think my dad, he used to work in like a old platform and he created this ring for himself out of like metal and was like this big thick ring that he created out of metal when he was like in his twenties and he just kept this ring for a long time. So it had become special to him. And then at some point he gave it to my little sister and then it became special to her and then she lost it. <laughs> Relationship is something I think is pretty core to a lot of gifts. And there's basically two different ways it can apply. One is that the relationship you have to someone enhances the value of the gift. And the other is that the gift itself is meant to enhance the relationship you have with someone. Basically what I mean by the first one is that the gift you're giving becomes more special because it's you who is giving it. This becomes especially true if it's something that is more creative or took a lot of effort or took a lot of yourself. The perfect example of this is some young kid giving some art to the parent. It doesn't matter how well constructed it is or how much effort it took. What mattered is that the kid created something for their parent and then probably the parent appreciates it no matter what it looks like or what it is. Now the other end of like a gift that is meant to strengthen the relationship is basically something that leads to you spending some quality time together. Three different ways this can happen. One is just that the gift itself involves you spending some time together, like going to a concert, you can buy tickets to you and the person. The Next one is that part of the gift is you lending your expertise or you lending your time. Like, let's say the gift is that you will help them go shoe shopping. That means that one, you give them the money to buy shoes. And then two, you give them your expertise of shoe shopping. And three, that you, they also get to kind of spend an evening or afternoon or whatever with you shopping. So that's like a three in one gift. And then the last one can be just like some quality time added on top of another gift. Like let's say you are not a gamer, but your partner is and you are giving them a PS5. What you could add on top of that is just like a coupon for 10 hours of you playing whatever game they want with them. Now, all of these gifts have the thing in common that they're kind of assuming a close relationship with the person who's getting it. And they're assuming that the person wants to spend some quality time with you and that this will be like a good thing for both of you. So now I'll go through some gift examples. Most of these gift examples will be things that I've given off. And it feels a bit weird kind of <laughs> bragging about the amazing gifts I've given, but I figure I will just share my thoughts of what went into some of these things. And hopefully it will be able to give you some ideas. The first gift I'm starting off with is something that is a bit more general and not a specific idea, but more just something I've given a couple of times and I've received a couple of times. And the core idea of this gift is just that you have some domain advantage or expertise in some area and you can use this to give a really good gift to the other person that they wouldn't necessarily be able to or would do for themselves. Generally, how this has been applied to me has been with tech because I've been a bit ahead of the curve in terms of technical adaptation. And then also I've been a bit more willing to just tinker with various tech things and try things out. So there's generally been two components to these types of gifts. Like one is just getting them some technical thing that they wouldn't have gotten for themselves. And then also generally it comes with some form of like tinkering or putting in effort to improve the gift in some way for them. One way I applied this was for Christmas for my sisters, I got them Oculus Quests. Now just giving them Oculus Quests, it's still something that I'm probably more likely to give to them than they are to buy to themselves just because I know they both like VR, so it wasn't like completely out of the blue, but they're not that likely to buy it for themselves. But the second part is more where my domain expertise came in, where I knew the best experience for the VR is a game called Beat Saber, which is basically like Guitar Hero, but you use lightsabers. So I downloaded that for the Oculus Quests, but the best experience with Beat Saber is being able to play custom songs. But to do that on the Oculus Quest, it's like a bit of a process, like you need to flash the Oculus Quest and then you need to download and install the custom songs in like a bit of a tricky way, at least it was when I did this. So that's what I did for these things. Like I bought them and then I did the setup process and I loaded it up with a bunch of custom songs. And this is something they probably, even though they're both capable of doing it, it's something they probably would have, wouldn't have researched or thought to do on their own but it was something that I was happy to do as part of the gift. So it got me an opportunity to 
spend some more time and put some more effort into the gift to make it more enjoyable for them. The next gift is a bit hard to kind of quantify or explain. It is a gift for my late girlfriend, Liz. And it is basically a gift where I wrote this program that took in the input of all of our WhatsApp messages to each other. And then it spat out this like report where it kind of looked at word frequency and how much we were texting each other at what points throughout the day and emoji use. And basically just completely useless, kind of interesting data like that. She was talking about how she liked this statistical programming language called R. And I was kind of looking for a new programming language to learn. So I used this opportunity of giving her this gift as just an excuse to learn a new programming language. And this gift is like completely useless and it doesn't like serve any specific purpose and doesn't cost any money, but it was just a way for me to just pour a lot of effort into creating something that was special for us to kind of share and just something that showed how much she meant to me in a way. It is a bit difficult to explain the technicalities here. There was like a journal of my progress that I shared with her and like a report of what I found that I wrote, but I will, but I wrote a post on Reddit after she passed away about this gift because I just wanted to share it with someone. And I will link to that in the description. Another gift is a gift I received actually from a friend of me and friend of the channel, Tom. He's a person I've known for like over a decade and we originally met in WoW, but this gift is something he just sent to me out of nowhere like many, many years after we had stopped playing WoW. The gift was two parts. One was a picture of our two WoW characters just kind of hanging together. You'd like find some old screenshot and frame that, which was a very nice gesture. It's like not something I was expecting and just came out of the blue. And the other gift was also similarly. He, he gave me three Pokemon cards from his Pokemon collection. It was Charizard, Blastoise, and Venusaur. I have them here. And again, this is like a very memorable gift in the sense that I was never thinking about Pokemon cards. This was long after I had been collecting Pokemon cards and it was long before it became like a thing to care about Pokemon cards again. But he kind of just recognized that we had this shared experience even though we didn't have the same experience. We had like both collected Pokemon cards growing up. So he knew that I would be able to appreciate what he was giving me in some sense. And because I knew those cards were special to him growing up and he gave them to me, they became a special gift to me, even though I never knew that I wanted Pokemon cards or I didn't want Pokemon cards until I, he gave them to me. Another gift, this is quite a while ago, but I gave it to my girlfriend I was living with at the time in Germany. If you're ever watching this, hello Aisha. Um, the gift was basically like a dream slash vision board, like these types of boards you can put on various pictures and stuff like that. And then I just kind of filled it up with things that would be a good part of the gift. Like there was a lot of pictures of us there. Then I think I had like some coupons for like dishwashing or some stuff like that. I remember one thing I did was that I had like a picture of our Skyrim characters together. We had this like period of like a week where that was all we did. We were just like, it's a single player game, but we were just hanging out together, playing our own version of Skyrim, but kind of together. And so what I did was like, I took a picture of those characters and I photoshopped them together. And then I created a picture of that and put it on the cookboard. And then I also think I have bought tickets to a trip to India together for us. This was kind of leaning quite heavily in the surprise aspect of things where we'd never gone on a trip like that before. I think we kind of talked about maybe doing it, but I was just like, I'll buy the ticket. I'll make sure I can refund it if it's not happening. And then I just kind of took the plunge together with this corkboard and that was a gift. I think this type of this type of board is a pretty good gift, especially if it's like to a partner who you're living with. It gives you a nice opportunity to fill it up with things that are kind of personal and very specific to your relationship. And it can be like some things that can be actively used, like a coupon for doing the dishes or something like that. But also like anything flat can be put on this board and be wrapped in. So you can put something like plane tickets or concert tickets, or basically anything that goes onto paper is something you can put on this thing. So it's very versatile and you can add a lot of personality to it and put a lot of effort into it. A, another gift I figured I would mention is pretty standard gift. It was something I think my sister came up with that we gave to our dad. And it was basically just creating a painting, me and my two sisters, we just created a painting 
that we gave to our dad. It's a pretty useful gift. Like obviously a painting isn't directly useful, but it's something that has been hanging on his wall or his, on his apartment for like almost a decade now. So it's been like prominently featured in his life for a very long time, even though it doesn't have a direct use. But also a reason why I bring this up, I'll show the painting next to me, is because creating something that is kind of crafted is something you think a lot about when you're just a kid, you're like eight years old and you just, whatever you create is wonderful and you just give that to your parents. But it's something you kind of stop thinking about as an option unless you are very talented as you become an adult. But this is something me and my sisters did when we were all adults and none of us have any specific talent in painting. We just figured it would be a cool thing to create something for him and we just got some paint and got the canvas and got a frame and we just splashed some paint together until it looked kind of all right and then we gave it to him. And I think the results are pretty nice, even though we didn't really know what we were doing. And it's been a nice painting that he can just hang on his wall and say like, hey, my kids made this. I do sometimes think about what would be an amazing gift to give to someone, just because it would require so much effort and it would be such a surprise, is if you were dating someone and they spoke a different primary language to you, if you just spent a bunch of time learning this on your own time, and then on their birthday or on your anniversary or whatever, you just whipped out and suddenly you spoke this language to like a, conversational level. These are the types of gifts I feel like people just remember for the rest of their life. And this is also a perfect example of how you can use the motivation of like doing something special for your partner or doing something, something special for someone else as a motivation to kind of learn or improve yourself in some way. So that was just some examples of gifts. I feel like leverage some of these concepts in a good way. But the thing about giving an amazing gift is that it has to be specifically tailored to the person and to the situation. So you can't just like copy paste the answer for someone else and then put it to people in your life. Basically what you need to give a really great gift is first of all, you need to know the person really well and have some understanding of what they would appreciate. And then you need to all add your own special flavor to that by like remembering some specific moments or putting in a lot of effort or creating something that is special to both of you. Basically, it needs some personal touch. And I can't say what that personal touch would be because it's different for each relationship. It's different for each person. But hopefully this idea and me sharing some thoughts around this and sharing some of my previous gift ideas, if you are looking for creating something special, has given you some ideas of what directions to head in. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next Wednesday.